Okay, on to the equipment that we're going to be using to sedate our patients. The gas delivery system. Uh, the gas, as I mentioned, in the tank is a high pressure of 750 PSI in the nitrous tank and 2000 PSI in the oxygen tank. That needs to be reduced so that the patient can inhale it safely. Uh, and so that is done by a regulator or pressure reducing valve. Reduces the high pressures in the tanks to about 50 PSI. Uh, and there are pressure gauges that accompany these regulators and will display the gas pressures within the tank, the pressure within the tank, not the pressure delivered to the patient. There's something called a pin index safety system. I'm going to tell you this is going to be much easier to see when we change tanks in clinic, but it's an attachment configuration on the yoke stand for each cylinder to be correctly attached to the unit. It's specifically arranged metal pins. They have a certain length and a certain width um, onto which the gas cylinder is fitted. The uh, oxygen tanks can only fit on the oxygen side. Their pin index only fits that certain metal pin and the nitrous tanks can only fit on their side for their particular uh, pin indexes prevents the incorrect gas cylinders from being attached to the yoke. You can't run four tanks of nitrous oxide off a yoke stand. Again, the gas delivery system, remember that the gauge for oxygen accurately represents the amount of oxygen in the tank, not so with nitrous oxide. The flow meter. The flow meter is really our visual indicator of the amount of gas the patient is receiving. It sits on top of the yoke stand and gas flows from the cylinders, the oxygen and nitrous cylinders, through color-coded hoses on the back into the flow meter. So the hoses, in addition, besides being color-coded, also vary in size and connection to prevent improper gas flow to the machine. So you can't switch the hoses. You can't use a nitrous hose on the oxygen side and vice versa. You'll see small balls, little black balls within the tubes, the flow meter tubes. There's a tube for oxygen and a tube for nitrous oxide. And these small balls rise and fall according to the amount of gas flowing to the meter. When you're looking at that ball, you want to look at the middle of it, the, the, the wide part of it. Um, and that indicates the liters of flow per minute of gas being delivered to the patient. The flow meter has the fail-safe mechanism, the mechanism that prevents 100% nitrous oxide delivery. A val the the fail-safe mechanism is a valve, and it opened, this valve opens to allow nitrous flow only when there is 30% of oxygen flowing to the unit. The reservoir bag. Its main purpose is to supply an additional source of gas. You'll use it as a visual mechanism for monitoring your patient's respiration. Uh, you'll want to watch to make sure the reservoir, reservoir bag isn't overfilled. It's not filled tight like a balloon or flat as a pancake. We don't want it over or underfilled. Um, the reservoir bag can function in an emergency uh, to provide additional oxygen, but its, it's uh, main purpose is to provide additional gas. The conduction tubing delivers the gas. Uh, <clears throat> We don't want to add hose to facilitate delivery to another room or area of the office because that means it's taking longer for gas to get to the patient, whether it be oxygen or oxygen and nitrous oxide. We also want to prevent kinking or constriction of the hoses. That'll prevent gas flow. So we'll make sure as you're delivering nitrous oxide to each other that those conduction tubings and hoses aren't kinked or constricted in any way. The nasal hood delivers gas for inhalation. 
Um, obviously, medical consideration when, as I mentioned, um, medicine uses a fair bit of nitrous oxide in its procedures. They use a full face, face mask. Because we need access to the mouth, we use a nasal hood. The nasal hood collects the exhaled gas and directs it to our scavenger system, scavenging the exhaled gas. We want to make sure it's sealed around the patient's nose so gas doesn't leak out the side. You're looking here at the nasal hood and then actually an autoclavable inner liner. This is for the porter system. We have some of these and again the nasal hood is out here with an autoclavable inner liner. All nasal hoods should have scavenging capabilities. The scavenger system is designed to provide fresh gas to the hood through two hoses and then there's usually on the other side one or two, not usually, there is one or two additional hoses evacuating gas being exhaled by the patient. This scavenger system removes the exhaled gas to, limbient, to, to limit the ambient air concentrations of nitrous oxide, to limit the amount of nitrous oxide that you're inhaling. Um, and our scavenger system simply connects to a high-speed evacuation system, an HVE. So units, oper operatory units or um, uh, units for restorative work, we have two HVEs set up, two HVE systems or two HVE hoses set up on our units. One HVE for uh, dental assisting suction as well as one for nitrous oxide scavenging. So here's the scavenger system again. You can see the nasal hood. This is the inner liner. Two hoses bring in fresh gas while two hoses evacuate the exhaled gas. Safety features, lots of safety features on nitrous oxide oxygen delivery equipment. Number one, the fail-safe mechanism. Nitrous oxide cannot be delivered. The valve to open nitrous oxide won't open unless oxygen is flowing at a minimum of 30%. The pin index safety system prevents incorrect tank attachment. Uh, I'll show you those pins in clinic. Uh, diameter safety system prevents incorrect hose attachment. The hoses are also color coded, as are the tanks color coded. Uh, emergency air inlet provides room air in an emergency situation. The non rebreathing valve prevents exhaled gas from entering the reservoir bag. There's an oxygen flush button where you can provide oxygen, 100% oxygen immediately to your patient. The reservoir bag can serve as a source of emergency gas and um, in the manifold system, in the central manifold system, alarm systems to indicate depleting oxygen supply. So if a tank is running out, uh, an alarm goes off to let you know you need more gas. Of course, like any of our equipment, maintenance is essential. Uh, follow the manufacturer's recommendations as far as recalibration, regular maintenance, checking of parts. Um, the biggest uh, thing for you to be aware of as a provider of this sedation is that there's lots of sources of leaks at the connections. We have lots of hoses and connections. Hoses connected to the nasal hood and the liner. Hoses connected to your HVE. So there are lots of sources of leaks at the connections and you want to check those connections regularly. That's it. Now, next audio, we're on to the actual patient assessment and administration of nitrous oxide sedation.